Hey everyone, welcome to Northern Aeronautical. My name is McCoy, and in this video, I wanted to introduce our latest rocket development, the Beagle Block 3. So, what is the Beagle Block 3? Well, it's a model rocket, of course, and as the title suggests, it's a grid fin stabilized model rocket. And that is the main focus of this model rocket, is to test grid fin stabilization in a model rocket. Not something you see very commonly, and why not try it out? So, uh, it being Beagle Block 3, meaning it is the Beagle rocket series, but it's the third block iteration of this rocket. So that being, there are two other block iterations behind it. And before I get uh, more directly into how the Beagle Block 3 works, I want to give a brief overview of Beagle Block 1 and Beagle Block 2, so it isn't much of a confusing jump between the history of the Beagle series. So a few months ago, I created the Beagle series, and no, it is not named after the dog, the Beagle, but rather the Mars lander, Beagle 2, which was Britain's first attempt at landing on Mars. I've always just had a pretty deep fascination of that Mars lander. I've always just thought it was pretty cool. So as I was making this and trying to figure out the name for this rocket, I was like, what the heck? Why not name it after that Mars lander? So I went ahead and did that, and hence the name Beagle now. So Beagle Block 1. Well, Beagle Block 1 was two rockets. So there's Beagle Block 1 1 and Beagle Block 1 2. And their point was to test cone stabilization of a model rocket. I'm not sure how well we can see back here, but it is this rocket right here, and this is Beagle Block 1, 2, and it has that cone at the base of it. And that is a form of stabilization used in model rockets. So why do this? Well, the point of the Beagle series is to test um, experimental stabilization techniques, not uh, as an experimental, I mean like things that you don't see commonly in model rockets. So you don't see a cone at the bottom of a model rocket for stabilization. And by this, I also mean that it's not, it's particularly passive stabilization techniques. So you won't see a TVC or active fence stabilization on a rocket because we're directly going for passive stabilization. Passive as in like fins, pa fins are passive. They don't actuate and move by a computer telling them to do so to keep it straight. So as an experimental rocket, uh, rocket stabilization techniques, I don't mean TVCs or active fin stabilization. I mean solely passive stabilization techniques. All right, so now that I got that over, Beagle Block 1 was to test that cone stabilization technique. And we did that for the first flight of Beagle Block 1, 1. And it didn't go so well, not because the passive stabilization of the cone did not work, but because we did not have a launch rod. So it didn't have anything to write up as it got up to speed to where it would have enough aerodynamic force to keep it stabilized. Once it started to get into more uh, flight, it did stabilize a bit more, but basically as soon as it got off that launch pad, it tipped over. From any form of off-center thrust, off-center mass, it just flipped over. There was nothing to really get it up to speed or allow it to do so. So it just flipped over and didn't go so well. So after that flight, we then transitioned to using fins on the Beagle series, which is pretty counterintuitive because the whole point of the Beagle series was to not use fins, to use stuff that you don't see very often. But we were testing our NE3 rocket motor at the time, and so and we kind of set aside the idea of testing these experimental te uh, stabilization techniques and just focus on testing the thrust and the flight performance of our any 3 rocket motor. And as a few of the videos in the background suggest, it didn't go so well. You'll see multiple explosions of these rockets and they're just not so well uh, suited for flight because the any 3 had a ton of overpressurization issues. And the video playing right now is it actually exploding because that any 3 and as you can see on that rocket, there are fins. So after Beagle Block 1 and the a uh, few flights that we did on those, we went on to Beagle Block 2. Beagle Block 2 was really distant from the original goal of the Beagle rocket to test these um, experimental stabilization techniques. It didn't even use one of our own rocket motors, it used an Estes C motor. So what we did was we just had um, fins on it and it looked nearly identical to this rocket just without the grid fins and replaced with typical fins that look nearly identical to these fins on the Ranger rocket. And its whole purpose was to just kind of test 3D printing a model rocket. So the Beagle series is fully 3D printed and we wanted to kind of isolate 
that fact that it's fully 3D printed. We wanted to see how well and how we can iterate designs with a fully 3D printed rocket. The Block 1 series was also fully 3D printed, but we had other factors such as those passive or um, experimental stabilization techniques and our homemade rocket motors. So we wanted to get rid of all those other factors that could potentially ruin our um, attempt to fully 3D print these rockets and fully focus on making the best fully 3D printable rocket we could. And Beagle Block 2 was incredibly successful. It had, it was stable and it had some great flights. But on the second flight, my stupidity decided to, or I guess all of these flights actually, were flown in a small area with lots of trees around. So of course, on the second flight, it got lost in the woods and I have yet to find it since I spent multiple days or multiple hours over multiple days trying to look for this rocket. I was never able to find it. No matter how much I looked at the footage of where it landed, could never find it. So then that's the end of Beagle Block 2. And we wouldn't touch the Beagle series for many uh, months later. Uh, we were intended to make a second Beagle Block 2 as soon as we lost the first one. Um, we actually had already started making a new one before we even lost the Beagle Block 2. But uh, d we decided not to do that. And instead, the Beagle Block 2 um, partially created one uh, was then turned into our Viper rocket. We made two Viper rockets out of partially created um, Beagle Block 2. So then we completely did not touch the Beagle series. We focused on um, our Ranger and Gamma rocket. That was our new thing to test our flight computers. So now that we're coming close to the first flights of Gamma and Ranger, I've decided to reopen um, the Beagle Block 3 series. And we are going back to that idea of testing those experimental uh, techniques. So now that we're back on the topic of Beagle Block 3, I'll go ahead and pull it back out here. And of course, that experimental stabilization technique for Beagle Block 3 is these grid fins. Now, grid fins have been kind of popular now that SpaceX has used them on their uh, Falcon 9 rocket for propulsive landing. And so they're pretty common or pretty popular in the space community now. And so it's also kind of a cool thing to do to uh, use these since the Falcon 9 uses them. But the Falcon 9 uses them for a completely different purpose. It uses the, them to guide the Falcon 9 rocket to a precise location so it can propulsively land on the drone ship or at the landing pad off the coast of Florida, or I guess California as well. But um, these fins right here are not used for descent uh, guidance. They are strictly used for ascent guidance. So they are used like fins. And so I'll go ahead and go into how a grid fin works. So I'll take one off here. They're pretty easy to take off. But a grid fin is, as the name suggests, a fin. Many people think that they are just there to produce drag to stabilize the rocket, but they are actually fins. As you see, there are multiple rows of lines or columns of just fins. That's what they are. All these um, rows right here and here are all acting as fins. They do the same thing as fins, and it's just in a grid formation, hence the name grid fin. And it's just a very compact form of making fins, and they, instead of going more up, they can go more out or flat, and they're not as space consuming as a fin. And they're just pretty cool to look at, and they look pretty cool on a rocket. So that's how a grid fin works. It's, it's just like a fin, but just a cluster of them in a grid formation. And of course, uh, how a fin works is it lowers the center of pressure. So usually when you fly a rocket, uh, if you flow it without any fins, the main point of drag is that nose cone. Even though it's pretty aerodynamic, it's where all the drag is because the body is in the stream of the air. There isn't much drag on the rocket body itself. This is in the front of that stream of air, so it's creating the most drag. And so the center of pressure where all the aerodynamic forces are, um, majority are, is going to be in that fin, uh, that nose cone. And you don't want that. You don't want your center of pressure above your center of mass. That's how you get a very unstable uh, rocket. And so the idea of fins is to then create more drag in the back. So your center of pressure is more towards the back. And so it can be below that center of mass. It produces more uh, aerodynamic 
forces interact with them more than the nose cone would. So you have that center of pressure below them. And that's how the grid fins also work. They're just fins. So they lower that center of pressure below that center of mass and to stabilize it. So that's the main idea of Beagle Block 3. It is to test the idea of using grid fin stabilization in a model rocket. Um, but there's another key aspect of the Beagle Block 3 rocket and that if you look closely, I'm not sure how well it can be seen, but the grid fin is at a slight tilt and that is not an accident. That's not me uh, sloppily putting them on the rocket, even though they are currently. It is purposely tilted to induce a roll. So the idea is, is that the air will then, uh, with them being tilted, the air will then be pushed in a sideways direction, causing the rocket to roll. And why make it roll? That kind of seems stupid. You don't want the rocket to do crazy things. You're trying to keep it on a straight trajectory. Well, roll actually stabilizes the rocket through, I mean, you know, the gyroscopic effect. It's gonna be a lot harder to change the direction of something that's spinning really fast. The idea is, is to spin that rocket up as much as possible to keep it stabilized. And that just adds more stabilization, stabilization on that rocket to keep it on course. It's pretty helpful because um, spin stabilization really helps keeping it on an, your intended trajectory. And so I'm able to more precisely be able to figure out where that rocket is gonna end up. And so it won't end up in the woods next time. And that's a huge thing I don't want to happen after Beagle Block 2. So that's just a very brief overview of the Beagle Block 3 rocket. It's intended to test stabilization of grid fins on a model rocket. And that's the whole idea of it. Uh, as the idea of the Beagle series is to test these experimental um, uh, stabilization techniques of model rockets. So this is just a quick video on that, uh, going over this new rocket. We're gonna do a much more in-depth video about all of this and how it all works. Um, and maybe even a whole, full video on the Beagle series about each flight we did and everything we learned. But this is just supposed to be a video talking about uh, that, that we are introducing this new rocket. Uh, just releasing it and it should fly within the next few days depending on how quickly I can put together our launch pad. I've had a couple um, issues from the original design so it's being pretty slow uh, to build. Um, it's much more advanced than our previous launch pads so it's taking a bit more time. It was originally intended to fly either today or tomorrow but it looks like it might be pushed to me Saturday or more realistically Sunday. So hopefully that flies soon. And when it does, um, it will, we will re uh, release a video on it, um, maybe even live stream the launch because we've done a few flights now with previous Beagles and we're feeling pretty comfortable about possibly live streaming our own launch because we've also tested some live streams in the past. So the first flight of Beagle Block 3 won't have a recovery system. It will, because we just kind of want to iron out uh, the grid fin stabilization. We don't want to add a parachute ejection system because since it will be flying on our own model rocket motor, it won't have an ejection charge. So we will we'll have to implement a mechanical or black powder system in it that will have to be triggered by a flight computer. And we don't want to lose that flight computer in the more expensive uh, parts of it because this is an experimental stabilization rocket. We don't know if it will stabilize it might just end up shooting into something and completely breaking itself. So we're just gonna stay away from that at a mass simulator to simulate the weight of a recovery system. And once we iron out any issues and make sure that this rocket does stay stabilized, we will implement a stable or parachute deployment system. And that will probably be around on the third or second, maybe second flight. And so first flight, it'll just crash into the ground um, it being fully 3D printed, it seems to be pretty strong. It's easy to fix. Um, I did break Beagle Block 2 once uh, when it hit some pavement and it was super easy to fix. I was able to fly it the same day I broke it. So I'm not too worried about it being fully 3D printed. And it's the Beagle Block 3 will be the first time a fully 3D printed plastic rocket motor is flown on a fully 3D printed rocket. So it's a fully 3D printed rocket. The only thing not 3D printed rocket about it is the paint and a little bit of electrical tape I have it for pressure fits, glue, and the rocket fuel itself. Everything about it 
is pretty much 3D printed, which is pretty cool and a pretty um, leap forward in 3D printing technology for model rockets. So anyways, that's about the end of this video, just giving a release of our new rocket and telling you what it's all about. So Eagle Block 3, Grids and Stabilization Model Rocket. So thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.